Stay in the hallway with an HK. My niggas all about gunplay. I get my work from Jose. That's how my shit is okay. Y'all niggas, y'all okay. Post it up for the whole sake. And yeah, we post it up with them grams. And hey, y'all post it up for the gram. I keep me a gun that won't jam. And I shoot till it's burning my hand. Oh, um, yo, welcome back. This for another subscriber request. Go by the name of Phoenix King. My fault, you know what I mean? I'm sorry for getting back to you so late. My apologies. I just be going through the list. I be having a lot to do. But I'm getting to you now, my G. Uh, this one is 107 Michael Jackson music facts you should know. So let's get into it, you know what I mean? Did you know that Michael Jackson wanted to be an X-Men? And that he loved E.T.? We'll tell you all about it. But first, let's check how this music legend went from child sensation to the most iconic pop star of all time. With hit albums like Off the Wall, Thriller, and Bad, Michael set multiple records and changed the game, not only in music history, but in music video history too. And not without leaving us with some signature dance moves. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dylan, and we're here to tell you all things MJ, including a lightning round on Thriller. So get ready, because Mike Drop is counting down the 107 music facts about Michael Jackson. Fact number one. Michael Joseph Jackson was born on August 29, 1958 in Gary, Indiana to mother Catherine Scruz and father Joseph Jackson. Fact number two. His father, Joe, aspired to be a guitarist but put his musical dreams on hold when he married Catherine. Catherine also once had musical aspirations. She dreamed of making it big as a country star. Fact number three. Michael's mom was a Jehovah's Witness and would support her sons as they grew up by singing with them and making their costumes. Fact number four. Michael's father worked as a crane operator to help support the family. Family. Despite his workload, he helped launch his son's music career by booking them their very first couple of gigs. Fact number okay. five. MJ was one of nine siblings in his family. What's even more amazing is that each of the kids have dabbled in music at one point. We've could have had the Jackson 9 instead of the Jackson 5. Fact number six. When he wasn't performing with his brothers, Michael liked to read books and shoot hoops. Some of his favorite books were The Old Man and the Sea and Rip Van Winkle. Fact number seven. Michael was also the notorious prankster of the family and would hide spiders and bugs in his sister Latoya his bed all the time. Fact number eight. Young Michael grew up listening to the music of legendary artists like Jackie Wilson, Diana Ross, Sam Cooke, and Stevie Wonder. Fact number nine. One night, Joe Jackson discovered that his three oldest sons, Jackie, Tito, and Jermaine, had been playing one of his most prized guitars behind his back. At first, he was upset. But he quickly got over it after he realized that his sons were musically gifted and immediately put them to crafting their abilities. Fact number 10. The Jacksons knew that Michael, who was just four years old at the time, had major star potential. When they saw him getting down to a James Brown song, Here we go. you can definitely see traces of the great James Brown's influence on MJ's career. Both had flashy, extravagant shows and gave moving, soulful performances on stage. Michael credits James Brown as a musical hero. Fact number 11. Michael joined his siblings at the age of five and took on the role as the band's lead singer. They started performing at nightclubs and strip clubs their dad Joe had booked. Fact number 12. The band that Michael and his four siblings formed was first called Ripples and Waves plus Michael and then changed it to the Jackson Brothers before they finally settled on Jackson 5. Fact number 13. Joe Jackson still moonlighted as a guitarist for an R&B band named The Falcons, but in 1964, when he realized that his sons were musically gifted, he decided to drop everything and manage them as a family band. As Fact number should. 14. From 1966 to 1968, the Jackson 5 toured the Midwest and performed with Sam and Dave, the OJs, Gladys Knight, and Etta James. Fact number 15. After a few years touring locally, the Jackson 5 signed to legendary record label Motown Records in 1969. Michael, now age 11, was the group's baby-faced frontman. Fact number 16. Motown's founder, Barry Gordy, took the boys under his wing and even let them stay at his Hollywood Hills mansion for a year while they recorded songs and polished their act. Barry's mentorship to the boys was important in their success. Before signing the Jackson 5, he had helped so many other artists perfect the signature blend of R&B, gospel, and pop that made the Motown sound. Fact number 17. In 1970, the group's single, I Want You Back, hit airwaves and the Jackson 5 and their style of bubblegum soul were an instant sensation. Fact number 18. I Want You Back made it to number one on the Billboard Hot 100, as well as three of their other singles, ABC, 
The Love You Save, and I'll Be There. The first three singles to hit the top of the charts were predicted by Barry when he signed the group, showcasing his expertise. Fact number 19. As Jackson Mania swept the nation, the boys dominated pop culture. They went on tour, headlining arenas across the U.S., and made multiple appearances on The Ed Sullivan Show. Fact number 20. After the band came out with their own postcards, stickers, and board game, it only made sense for the Jackson 5 to star in their very own animated series. The band was too busy on tour to voice the characters, but each episode did feature their own music and some live action photos and footage. Fact number 21. After the band produced a string of hits for Motown, CBS gave the Jackson 5 their own variety special in the summer of 1976. Unfortunately, creative rifts between the boys and their label began to cause some friction in their relationship. Fact number 22. For a few years, Motown had been grooming young Michael for a solo career of his very own. Their decision to lift MJ into the spotlight was locked down with the release of his first two solo singles, Gotta Be There and Rockin' Robin, which were featured on his debut solo album, Got to be there. Fact number 23. MJ released his second solo album called Ben in 1972, which featured a ballad about a pet rat named Ben. The song became his first number one as a solo artist and was also nominated for an Oscar for Best Original Song. The track was originally written for a movie called Ben and was supposed to go to the singer Donny Osmond until the songwriter Don Black suggested Michael Jackson record it. Fact number 24. The Jackson 5 united and fought Motown for creative control and were finally able to break free with their last hit on the label, Dancing Machine. But unfortunately, Motown's executives made it clear they didn't want the boys to make music for themselves and would no longer allow them to use the name Jackson 5. Fact number 25. The band eventually found their way out of the contract with Motown, re-signed with Epic Records, and renamed themselves The Jacksons. After a couple of false starts, The Jacksons released three more albums under their new name, Destiny in 1978, Triumph in 1980, and Victory in 1984. Fact number 26. Michael chose to focus on his solo career instead of the group efforts, and in 1978, made his first appearance on the silver screen as the Scarecrow in the movie The Wiz. He won an NAACP Image Award for his role, and maybe more importantly, the friendship of famed producer Quincy Jones, who worked on the film's soundtrack. Fact number 27. Quincy and Michael had actually met before at a party at Sammy Davis Jr.'s house when Michael was 12. Quincy was drawn to Michael's childlike sense of wonder, which boosted Michael's career in the end. The story goes that during rehearsals on set, Michael kept pronouncing the name of philosopher Socrates Socrates. When Quincy corrected him, Michael's eyes went wide and asked, Really? The next thing out of Quincy's mouth was an offer to produce Michael's album. Fact number 28. Quincy and MJ constantly worked through many exercises to mature Michael's voice, including hiring a vocal coach who was able to help Michael extend his vocal range by a full octave. Fact number 29. At first, Michael was extremely shy when he was working with Quincy. Sometimes, he would even sing with his back turned to him while Quincy's eyes were covered and the lights were off in the room. Fact number 30. His album, Off the Wall, was released in 1979 just a couple weeks before Michael turned 21. Happy birthday, MJ! Pretty sweet gift. Major release. Fact number 31. Off the wall sound referenced pop and disco influences, but because audiences were beginning to get over the played out disco, Quincy Jones hoped that the record would serve as a death blow to disco music altogether. He said, I admire disco, I just thought it had gone too far. Fact number 32. Off the Wall was a breakthrough for Michael Jackson as a solo artist, peaking at number three on the Billboard 200 and becoming the okay. first album by a solo artist to have four top ten songs on the Hot That's 100 you know chart. King. More importantly, the record served as MJ's anthem of freedom from the chains of his childhood stardom. Fact number 33. Off the Wall became a massive critical success when it dropped with some critics calling Michael Jackson the Stevie Wonder of the 80s. Those comparisons weren't too far off, considering Stevie himself helped Michael write some of the songs on the album. Fact number 34. Two of those songs, Don't Stop Till You Get Enough and Rock With You, hit number one on the Billboard Hot 100 and became dance floor staples worldwide. Strangely enough, the album was overlooked at the 1979 Grammys, only scoring two nominations and one win for Don't Stop Till You Get Enough for Best Male R&B Pop Vocals. So Fact number 35. Don't Stop Till You Get Enough was featured as Chris Tucker's go-to karaoke jam in Rush Hour 2. Come on! He was close friends with the pop star, and after MJ saw the movie, he gave Chris a call to let him know that he was doing the dance wrong. He was kicking with the wrong leg. Zing! And he was getting a kick from his bro, Michael. Fact number 36. Michael then returned to the studio with Quincy Jones to work on his next album. While they were recording, Steven Spielberg asked him to record a song to tie in with the storybook for his film E.T. the Extraterrestrial. The song eventually became a full album...
watching the infomercial. I'm sorry. E.T. the Extraterrestrial. The song eventually became a full album tie-in with narration provided by Michael himself as E.T.'s story. MJ phoned home. The E.T. album won a Grammy in 1983 for Best Recording for Children. Fact number 37. During a studio session, Michael identified so much with E.T. as a character that when he got to the part when E.T. dies, he began to cry. Michael even owned one of the E.T. puppets that was used in the film. Fact number 38. While they recorded E.T., Quincy and MJ were also grinding out material for his next album, Thriller. Michael was fired up and ready to prove himself as an artist after Off the Wall. He didn't get much recognition at the Grammys. He was also disappointed that he was denied a cover feature for Rolling Stone. Fact number 39. Michael soon teamed up with composer Rod Temperton. Instead of writing things down, Michael dictated his lyrics into a voice recorder and sung his lines from memory when he was in the studio. Fact number 40. During recording, Michael was inspired by composer Tchaikovsky's famous classical piece, The Nutcracker Suite, because he felt that every song on the album was a killer. Fact number 41. After they'd finished recording every song, MJ and Quincy listened to the album and hated it. Poor Michael wandered the halls of the studio in tears. After a couple days off, the duo re-teamed in the studio and spent the entire week remixing the whole album. Fact number 42. Looks like MJ didn't need any of that nutcracker fairy magic because upon its release, Thriller became an instant hit. That was a smash It did well critically worldwide. and commercially and went on to snag the number one spot in 13 countries. Thriller was a smash everywhere. I mean, when that album dropped, what? Kidding me? Fire! Back number 43. I don't like in that, the U.S., man. Thriller stayed at number one Fire. in Billboard 200 for 37 weeks. 37 which is weeks, still man. the current highest what? record. Thriller was also the first album in history to stay in the top 10 for the first year and a half it was available for sale. Fact number 44. Out of the album's nine tracks, seven of them made their way to the top 10 of the Billboard Hot 100, which has been achieved again by Bruce Springsteen and Michael Jackson's own sister, Janet. Out of these seven singles, Beat It, Billie Jean, and Thriller achieved number one status. Fact number 45. The inspiration for Beat It came about because Quincy Jones and MJ agreed that the album needed a catchy rock and roll tune similar to My Sharona by The Knack. They pulled out their big guns and called rocker Eddie Van Halen to play guitar on the song. The rest of his band happened to be out of town at the time, so Eddie figured, why not, and agreed to do it, and the rest is history. Fact number 46. Billie that. Jean was a personal tune for Michael because it was based on a real girl who stalked him and whipped up crazy stories, like that he was the father of one of her twin boys. Yep, you heard right. One of her twins? One time she even climbed the wall of his house do you know what one of the primary killers of testosterone is for men over the age of 21? It's visceral fat, or more com- Yep, you heard right. One of her twins? One time she even climbed the wall of his house and in the morning, Michael woke up to find her lounging by the pool in a bathing suit and sunglasses. Fact number 47. Billie Jean was made even Goodness. more famous during Michael Jackson's live performance of the song on the Motown 25 special in 1983 when he performed the moonwalk for the very first time. The performance earned him a standing ovation and an Emmy nomination for outstanding individual performance in a variety or musical program. Fact number 48. The moonwalk became one of Michael's signature moves. But many don't know that it actually existed years before the King of Pop debuted his version. Tap dancer Bill Bailey performed it in the 1950s, and it also appeared in the television show Fame, in the movie Flashdance, and in the music video for Buffalo Gals by Malcolm McLaren. But Michael Jackson's repeated use and perfection of the move makes us all think of him when we see this amazing walk. Fact number 49. Michael became such a big hit that he ended MTV's policy of not playing African-American acts. Walter Yetnikoff, the president of CBS Records at the time, stood up to MTV and told them that if they didn't play Michael's videos, he would pull all the CBS Columbia acts from their rotation. Good thing it worked. We can't imagine a world with Michael Jackson videos, and more importantly, without black artists. Hat tip to MJ and Mr. Yetnikoff for achieving a huge milestone for civil rights. Fact number 50. Since its release, Thriller has become the only album in history to be named 30 times platinum, really? which means sold over 30 million copies. Time for the lightning round. Not only did the Thriller album do well, but the song itself has gone down in history as one of the most famous pop songs and the most famous music video of all time. Let's take a closer look at the spooky hit. Fact number 51. Thriller was destined to be a hot track from the get-go. Even one of the speakers in the studio caught fire while Michael was recording his vocals. Woo! Too hot to handle. Fact number 52. The song had a cinematic vibe that was matched by its 14-minute long music video directed by John Landis. Landis is known for directing National Lampoon's Animal House, The Blues Brothers, and An American Werewolf in London. Looks like he took a page out of that last film for Michael Stoller character. Fact number 53. 
When they pitched the idea of Thriller to the record label, the company refused to pay for it because it would cost about $500,000, more than any other music video at that time. Michael offered to use his own money instead, but John Landis insisted they find another way. They decided to make a 45-minute documentary about the making of Thriller and about Michael's life and sell it as an hour-long special to cable companies, and it worked. Because in the end, Showtime and MTV each pitched in $250,000 to cover the cost of the video. Fact number 54, Michael was always getting calls and visits from other celebrities. Jackie O visited Michael in LA on the graveyard set of Thriller. She met with Michael and John Landis in MJ's trailer. I guess she's not afraid of zombies. Fact number 55, Deborah Nadulman Landis was the costume designer for Thriller, who designed the iconic red zipper jacket MJ wears. The set was dark and foggy, and Deborah said, I needed Michael to pop out of that picture. She was also responsible for creating the look of the iconic film character, Indiana Jones, and she happens to be director John Landis' wife. Fact number 56, the video premiered in full length on MTV in December 1983, near Christmas, not Halloween. Still, it became the network's most popular video, being played almost nonstop. The video's release also caused sales of the Thriller album to triple, and it has since been voted by MTV and VH1 viewers as the greatest music video of all time. Makes sense since it's been recreated so many times, even by those Filipino inmates. Fact number 57. Thriller is the only music video selected by the Library of Congress to be part of the National Film Registry. Fact number 58. John Landis credits Thriller with making the video business boom. Back then, it cost about $85 to buy a movie. Thriller was sold for $24.95 per video, and even Landis doubted people would buy it. They sold a million just in the U.S. Fact number 59. Legendary horror film star Vincent Price, who is the voice narrating on both the song and music video for Thriller, was paid less than $1,000 for his work. Even though that was a lot of money at the time, he later expressed deep regret for lowballing his rate, especially when Thriller became the biggest album in history. Fact number 60, per Michael's request, they had a premiere for the Thriller music video and all sorts of celebrities attended. Prince, Diana Ross, Eddie Murphy, Warren Beatty, and many more. The video got a standing ovation with people shouting, it? encore, encore, but John Landis told them there was none. Then Eddie Murphy got up and said, show the goddamn thing again, and they listened. People watched it a second time, and hey, we would do the same. Fact number 61. Thriller finally got MJ recognition by the Grammys in a massive way. He was nominated for 12 Grammy Awards and won 8 of them, including Record of the Year, Beat It, Producer of the Year, and Album of the Year. He also won Grammys in the Pop, R&B, and Rock categories. That is the end of the lightning round. Did we miss anything? What was your favorite part about Thriller? Comment below and let us know. Now it's back to the facts. Fact number 62. After Thriller, Michael worked on duets with Queen frontman Freddie Mercury. They laid down three tracks, but then Freddie backed out after Michael brought a llama into the recording studio. What's wrong with a little llama? The demos were finally taken out of the vault and released in 2013. Fact number 63. Michael's next big move was a $5 million ad campaign with Pepsi in 1983. At the time, that was the biggest endorsement deal ever. The campaign made history and helped shape the future of integrated marketing and celebrity endorsement deals, but it came at an unfortunate cost. One commercial shoot became disastrous when Michael's hair caught on fire after an explosion happened too early and sadly left him with burns on his scalp and face that were so severe it required plastic surgery. Fact number 64. A happy outcome of MJ's Pepsi commercials is that one of them featured future Fresh Prince of Bel Air star Alfonso Ribeiro Alfonso, who dresses and dances insane. like Michael in the streets until he runs into the king of pop himself. After he snaps out of being starstruck, they dance together with their posses, and Michael eventually dances away. The young Alfonso cannot believe what just happened. The actor revisits his MJ moves years later as the character Carlton Banks on The Fresh Prince. Little Alfonso, all grown up. Fact number 65. Michael was deeply invested in charitable causes in his spare time. He lent his music to a campaign by Ad Council and the U.S. Department of Transportation against drunk driving. The campaign won awards within the advertising world for best overall campaign, and Michael was invited to the White House so President Ronald Reagan could personally thank him. Fact number 66. Michael's humanitarian efforts continued with his 1985 charity single, We Are the World. Mm -hmm. He wrote the song with Lionel Richie and enlisted Quincy Jones to produce it. The song was intended Smash. to raise money for famine relief in Africa. Fact number 67. We Are the World featured numerous artists including Bob Dylan, Bruce Springsteen, Diana Ross, Stevie Wonder, Ray Charles, and Paul Simon, who all came together to lend their voices to the cause. The song was a huge hit, spending four weeks on top of the Billboard Hot 100 and earning over $63 million to aid those in need. Fact number 68. Can you guess which major superstar rejected 
accepted an offer to work on the We Are The World project? The purple one himself, Prince. Although he didn't contribute to the track, he did record an exclusive song called For The Tears In Your Eyes for the follow-up album, which was also titled We Are The World. Fact number 69. Another kind act to add to the list is the black AM band that Michael often wore as a way to create awareness for children's suffering around the world. He also donated the profits from his song Man in the Mirror to charity. Fact number 70. As Michael soared to new heights of fame, so did the number of crazy stories about him. Two huge rumors surfaced. One, that he was spending time in an oxygen chamber to stay young, and that two, he was trying to buy the famous elephant man's bones. He denied both claims and said that when the media did things like that or calling him Wacko Jacko, it was very hurtful. Fact number 71. Michael also made news for his adoption of the chimpanzee named Bubbles, a real-life pet he introduced to the world in 1986. The two were incredibly close and even shared a bathroom. Fact number 72. In 1986, MJ made an appearance in a sci-fi film produced for Disney called Captain EO. He worked alongside Oscar winners Francis Ford Coppola and Angelica Houston. It starred Michael as a space traveler who journeyed through the cosmos to bring life to a dark planet and its inhabitants. Michael also performed two original songs in the film. Fact number 73. Captain EO screened at multiple Disney theme parks, including Disneyland in California and Walt Disney World in Orlando. The film dazzled audiences for years with its wild 4D presentation and over 150 special effects. Fact number 74. Michael continued his reign as the king of pop with the 1987 album Bad. It was his final work with Quincy Jones and was released two days after Michael's 29th birthday. Fact number 75. The Bad Album was a landmark for Michael's career. It was his first album to debut at number one on the Billboard 200 chart and stayed there for six weeks straight. It was also the first album in the entire history of music to have five number one singles, a feat that has only been matched once since then by pop star Katy Perry with Teenage Dream. Fact number 76, the music video for the track Bad was directed by Martin Scorsese. It created a new, tougher image for Michael, who wore leather and chains for the shoot. And it also made the word bad a popular slang term that teens used. Ooh, that's bad. Fact number 77, originally Bad was supposed to be a duet with Prince, but Prince declined the collaboration because he didn't love the first line of the song, which is, your butt is mine. Fact number 78, Michael also released a tie-in film for Bad called Moonwalker. It featured music videos mixed with the loose story involving a drug-dealing villain played by Joe Pesci, who you may remember from the movies Goodfellas and Home Alone. Fact number 79, the music video for Smooth Criminal, which was also featured in Moonwalker, shows a sharply dressed Michael nailing some gravity-defying dance moves. Right. Those were made possible with wires during filming, but in order for him to recreate the moves during live performances, he invented special shoes that even received a patent from the U.S. Patent Office. MJ the Inventor. Fact number 80. The film led to a tie-in arcade game, also called Moonwalker, that featured Digital Michael using his magical dance moves to save children from the evil Mr. Big. It's a pretty funny way to spend some quarters. And don't worry, it's not the same Mr. Big from Sex and the City. Calm down, ladies. Fact number 81. In 1989, Michael was granted the monumental achievement of being named Artist of the Decade by President George H.W. Bush. Presidents love MJ. Fact number 82. His next album, Dangerous, was released in 1991. Its lead single, Black or White, was at the top of the Billboard charts for seven weeks. Fact number 83. Black or White was broadcast simultaneously in 27 countries and was seen by about 500 million people making it the largest audience in history to view a music video. Fact number 84. In 1992, Michael went on a highly publicized trip to Africa, where he attracted bigger crowds than both Nelson Mandela and the Pope. While he was there, he was named an honorary king of a village in West Africa and received a golden crown and ceremonial robes. Fact number 85. In 1993, MJ performed at the Super Bowl halftime show, drawing one of the largest viewing audiences in television history. Some reports claimed that the halftime show drew even more viewers than the game itself. Fact number 86. A few months after his much-talked-about Super Bowl performance, he received the 1993 Grammy Legend Award. Fact number 87. Michael was well-known for wearing a single glove while he performed. Ironically, there isn't any deep meaning behind it. He just felt that wearing one glove was cool. 
and he sure was right. Fact number 88. Michael won an MTV Movie Award in 1994 for Best Movie Song. The winning track was Will You Be There for the movie Free Willy. Free Fact Willy, number uh -huh. 89. In 1994, Michael married Elvis Presley's only daughter, Lisa Marie. Lisa and MJ drove to the small town of La Vega in the Dominican Republic for their nuptials, which were held in the judge's house who performed the ceremony, and it lasted just 15 minutes. Fact number 90. The marriage lasted for a year and a half until they called it quits. When Lisa tied the knot with MJ, she had divorced her previous husband, Danny Keough, only three months before. Fact number 91. After that failed romance, Michael struck up a relationship with longtime friend Debbie Rowe, who also worked as a nurse at the dermatology clinic where MJ was treated for his vitiligo, the disease that caused the skin to lighten over the years. The two were married in 1996. Fact number 92. Debbie and Michael had two children together, Prince Michael and Paris, but the couple later divorced in 1999. Fact number 93. MJ didn't release much new music after Dangerous. In 1995, he released History, yeah, a double a album featuring a collection of greatest hits and album. 13 original tracks. It debuted at number one on the Billboard Top 200. Fact number 94. History also featured two hit songs, Scream, Scream a duet with his sister mm -hmm. Janet Jackson, and You Are Not Alone, which was his final number one single. Fact number 95. You Are Not Alone was the first song to ever debut at number one on the Billboard charts, one of the several Guinness World Records MJ holds. Some of his other impressive records includes most successful music video and youngest vocalist to top the U.S. singles chart. Fact number 96. The 90s were a time when Michael appeared in the news less for his music and more for his personal life. One media story highlighted his purchase of an estate in Southern California that he turned into his own personal theme park, complete with a zoo and rides. He called it Neverland, or the Neverland Ranch, after the mystical land in Peter Pan. Fact number 97, Michael also once tried to buy Marvel Comics after meeting Stan Lee and telling him how badly he wanted to make a Spider-Man movie. Lee suspected that MJ wanted to play the hero himself, but producers of X-Men later revealed that he actually wanted to be cast as Professor X in the films. Professor MJ, not a bad secret power. Moonwalking. Great dance moves. Fact number 98. Michael created the Heal the World Foundation in 1992. It made international donations to those in need and brought underprivileged children to the Neverland Ranch. That's Fact wild, number bro. 99. As the new millennium rolled through, Michael looked to revive his musical career. In September 2001, he put on two 30th anniversary concerts at Madison Square Garden, featuring a star-studded roster of performers including Whitney Houston, Liza Minnelli, and Slash. It was also the first time Michael performed alongside his brothers, since the 80s. Fact number 100. In 2001, Michael released his Got next album, album Invincible. It debuted Fine. at number one on the Billboard Top 200 chart, which was his fifth number one album as a solo artist. Fact 101. In 2006, Michael attended the World Music Awards in London and accepted the Diamond Award for selling more than 100 million albums. Fact number 102. MJ is part of an exclusive club. He is one of just a few celebrities that have more than one star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. One for the Jackson 5, and one for his solo career. Fact number 103. Michael spent $47 million to own the publishing rights for the Beatles' back catalog in 1985. Years later, he sold a share of it to Sony for $95 million. A great investment indeed. Fact number 104. After feeling like the bad press affected the last half of his career, Michael decided he needed a bigger comeback. In 2009, he announced a residency show called This Is It, which was to be performed at London's O2 Arena. Originally, it was supposed to be a simple 10-show run, but once the pre-sale sold out within hours, he announced an expansion to 50 shows. Fact number 105. Unfortunately, those fans never got to see the final comeback. On June 25th, 2009, Michael Jackson passed away at age 50 from an unexpected cardiac arrest. Google, Twitter, and Wikipedia had to temporarily shut down to deal with all the increased web traffic. People around the world were shocked and utterly heartbroken. Fact number 106. In 2016, Off the Wall was reissued alongside a documentary made by Spike Lee that chronicles Michael's early solo career. Fact number 107. Michael Jackson's hometown of Gary, Indiana has plans to create a Michael Jackson museum to honor him. You know we're bad, we're bad, because once again, I'm Dylan, and you just finished watching Mike Drop's 107 Music Facts about Michael Jackson. Do you guys enjoy these facts? Mm-hmm. Make sure to subscribe because we're bringing you more facts every week about your favorite musicians. And let us know which artists we should find facts out about. Check out our other videos too all around here.
See you next week. We are out. That shit was dope too, man. I um, I learned some shit I didn't even know about Michael, man. I didn't know Prince turned it down because he didn't want to do that song uh oh bad because the first line was like your brother's mine. I mean, you Prince, nigga. I mean, oh R.I.P. Prince too. I fuck with Prince, man. Oh, yo, but Michael was that nigga, man. I learned a lot from just watching that. I didn't even know. I know about the Neverlands, the little uh, theme park he had in his crib and shit like that, but some of the shit I didn't even know, man. That shit about Prince, I didn't know that. You know what I mean? Um, a couple of other things, too, but yo, man, I don't even want to talk about, you know what I mean? That, that shit's sad when he passed away, man. And I didn't even know he went... He had, he had over 500 million views off of um, Man in the Mirror. I knew he had them views, but damn. And he went diamond? What? So, man. Uh, yo, that's it, man. Um, I'm about to go. This won't be my last video for the day. Um, those I didn't get to. No, I'm going to do probably do. I'm going to do two more. After that, then I'm, I'm out of here. You know what I mean? I'll get to everybody else later. Thank you all for your time. Thank you for your patience. Uh, Four minus three. One, and I'm out of here. Love is love. Thanks for watching. 275 for the Rolex. I got a whole bunch of wife next with that fake chain and respect your neck. My shit is a kilo, no saving hoes, I'm no hero. Gun the size of a hero. In my eyes, you a zero. Rich Rose with the whole say. Run up on a nigga in broad day in the hallway with an HK. My niggas all about gunplay. I get my work from Jose. That's how I know my shit is okay. Y'all niggas, y'all okay. Post it up for the whole sake. And yeah, we post it up with them grams. Hey, y'all post it up for the gram. I keep me a gun that won't jam. And I shoot till it's burning my hand.